Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Do You Know the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and right now, we need to talk about the day after the election. The two men shook hands as they entered the Oval Office. Congratulations on your re-election, Mr. President, the first man said. The pleasure's all mine, said President Re-elect Wallace F. Bennett. What wasn't what wasn't to be pleased about? The economy was going up, race riots were becoming a thing of the past, and America has largely moved on from Watergate in South Africa. Everything was going fine and steady, except uh, Mr. Secretary began the president as he occupied the resolute desk. What can you tell me about the ports? The secretary say bolted from his seat, sitting it scraping across the floor. He immediately turned to the entrance, saying, "I'll notify GCS immediately." No. What, what do I look like? Uh, right, it's not a job, President Bennett chuckled, gesturing to the secretary's chair. I'm not going to escalate if that's what you thought. I've got something bigger in mind. Eyes widened and dawn in realization. You mean... I'm not. I want to report on my desk by tomorrow morning. The likelihoods, risk assessments, angles, approaches. Everything you need, or you think I need to know. We'll discuss this detail with the rest of the cabinet right away. And with that, the handover was in motion, my friends. And right now... And we are still doing. Uh, the freer, the markets are freer, the people. So, I believe I've read this one before... But they can read it again, maybe, once, because why not? Through indeed, it's proved that a free market accelerates the flowering of human freedom more than any grand delinquent cause in human history. Democracies rise when men are free to organize their fortunes as they see fins. Liberty shines brightest where free men engage in business unfettered by the chains of tyrants and dictators. Free markets have paved the path the Enlightenment once, and so shall pay the path of the future. As champion of freedom, America has an unspoken obligation to encourage free markets whenever and wherever possible. President Bannon is cognizant of their consequent duties as the champion as helmsman, and thus shall propose more measures to free its own markets. The treaty port negotiations. A simple cabinet was silent, digesting the contents of the proposal before him. President Bennett surveyed the room, knowing the Normandy of the moment was giving everyone pause. It's been 20 years since the end of the war, gentlemen, President Bennett said, and a decade or so since Eisenhower tore up the Kage Accords and admitted Hawaii to the Union. Now it's our turn to finish what he started. The proposal to stand up to Japan at last and to demand negotiations over the treaty ports of San Francisco and Los Angeles will be the most ambitious and consequential diplomatic initiative by the U.S. in their lifetimes. The eyes of the world and of the American electorate will be scrutinizing them under a microscope. There will be no room for failure. The Japanese will simply win a fold. But it's clear that holding ports halfway across the world, a diplomatic nightmare and impossible to secure, was increasingly unattractive. How much could America push without being pushed aside by Japan in return? It would take the political power of the American government to ensure the successful return of the ports without giving away the house of the Japanese in the process. But a few concessions here and there might be useful making demands further down the line. Let's make history, gentlemen. A lot of decisions for the Honolulu Accords. Cool. We'll use a system where whatever superpowers invest more political power and we'll gain all political power from this. Nice. So we're pretty normal to this. Pretty used to uh, how the Akagi Accords work. Um, so I've done this quite a few times already. The RDs are ready for anything. American Society is united. we got some people who... American business is very high opinion of us, as well as foreign businesses, even the Mormons, Catholics, everyone loves us, except for, Dix except for Dixocrats, which is whatever, you know, they're Dixocrats, what do you expect? But we don't care about them. The Japanese proposed a summit location. Hawaii! President Wallace F. Bennett nearly choked on the morning coffee. Why do you have to go to the Japanese Hawaii to negotiate for American territory? That's ridiculous, giving them the home field advantage like that. And it's just a starting pitch. The Japanese are playing hardball, seeing what they can get away with. The Secretary of State picked up the community key from Japan that the President discarded. Though I'm sure that if we decide to take the offer, our diplomats can spend much more time preparing for the actual summit. Give me that, President Bennett said, rereading the community key again. If the Japanese want to play hardball, then we can have the darn summit on one of our carriers this time. If they gave away the port of the, the Akagi, then we'll give them back on the Enterprise. The voters will love it. What do we do from riling up the Japanese like this? The Secretary of State sighed. If you're worried about what the voters are going to think, why don't we propose Mexico City? Yeah, we're going to have a counter offer. Someone is set. The more we invest, the better it is. Uh, we will lose political power without investing more. We can bring up the enterprise. I have a counter offer. And you know what? Let's bring up the enterprise. If it goes poorly, then we'll just well make sure that it doesn't go too poorly for us. So, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know what we're doing here. Uh, the proposal is some location. The Japanese are proposing Mexico City is a neutral ground. President Wallace F. Bennett sounded slightly surprised. Never thought the Japanese would be reasonable about any of this business, but here we are. Now, the Secretary of State nodded. We got an embassy there, and we can set up a secure line and ensure direct contact with Washington is needed. Of course, the Japanese get all the benefits as well, President Bennett chewed on a pencil, thinking the offer over. You know, if the Japanese are being reasonable, it might not be a bad time to push the, uh, for going to one of our carriers. I'm sure the boys would love the optics. We'll take the Japanese offer. Losing some of our best political power, that's fine. Um, death of the tariff. Let's do Alberta and Bear. With a population of over 200 million and lively economy to match, the U.S. is an economic powerhouse surpassing even the German Reich and the Cold Prosperity Sphere. The same cannot be said of the quote work of erstwhile colonies and the new nations which compromise the rest of the OFM. Yet we demand equal contributions, militarily and diplomatically, from them in exchange for membership. Hardly a fair deal in any estimation. Though they will never match what we can achieve, President Bennett believes it is our responsibility to bring them closer to our level regardless. Thus, he has plans on having America short a portion of their debt and inject dollars into the markets, encouraging healthier budgets and stronger consumer spending. The summit is set. A Japanese just sent over the agreement on location. We're going. We're good to go for the uh, summit. Uh, a momentary look of relief emerged on the Secretary of State's face before swiftly disappearing. Now comes the hard part, President Wallace F. Bennett said. 
We better get ready for what the Japanese are going to want in exchange for giving back our territory. They want our oil and they want access to our markets. The Secretary of State slid a folder on the President's desk. With everything that's been going on in his fear, I can't say I blame him. President Bennett smiled on that. Give this leverage. Making history one step at a time. Mr. President. Uh, let me see. I think I've read this one before, but it just says Mr. President. So if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. So, minimum amount of oil. Give them as much oil as possible, yeah. So, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. So, that one's a pretty generic one. Usually, we, we usually do this when we're playing as the NPP, but we're playing as a Democrat? Well, is it a Democrat, I think? Yeah, LBJ is a Republican in this timeline. So, yeah. Republican, Democrat. A complete success. Oh, if you want to read about the last voyage of the USS United States, please go right ahead. Uh, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead as well. Nice. The negotiations worked. Nice. The U.S.-Japanese talks begin. Let's hope they stay that way. And you know what? I'm going to say just because I don't want to go back in time to fix that. Once it's saved, then we can just keep going on with success. Because we like having success, right? The Stonewall Bust, if you want to about the Stonewall Busts, or Bust, please go right ahead. And as well as Beach Boy, ex-associate charge of murder, Wilson, Wilson Melcher, Melcher murders. Thank God they caught him. Yes, routine, raid, carry on. We shall overcome our burden to bear, baby. Our burden to bear. We shall overcome. There you go. You wonder about that? Fuel to the fire. And into the bargo. Uh, kick lines of two guests. You wonder about that? Please go ahead. If you wonder about this one too, please go ahead as well. The cripple site. Lifting bargos are, are, is our objective. Push for favorable terms. So let's take a look here. Invest in negative 25 political power. Uh, is negative 25, huh? Alright. Push for more. I think push for more, maybe. Push for more favorable terms. We'll see what happens if it doesn't go well. You know, whatever. We can always restart, but whatever. Oh, we become a spy master as well. You never know when you're going to need that political power, though. Smiles all around. Great. If you want to about that, please go right ahead as well. Um, you know what? Like normal, I'm going to say, just because I don't want to come back and do this again, but it seems that the world is one step closer to thawing on relations between the U.S. and Japan. Nice. Third clause. Now... If you want to read about that, please go ahead. So this one can get a little tricky here, and we probably won't get it on the first try. You know that our demilitarization, free ports and demilitarized islands were secure relations. Do you have any to militarize for a while before receiving reports? This is probably not going to go very well for us. We'll see, obviously, but usually it doesn't go very well for us. But we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. And just in case, we'll read political realities. Read the newspaper and a number of sentiments become apparent. The name of America has not done enough to improve the uh, freedoms of its citizens. Now the colored man remains tethered to the dark while the white compatriots bathe in sunlight. That unless we enact change at once, America will doom itself to stagnation and collapse. Strong choice words. But brash and short-sighted as well. America's greatest political triumph has been achieved by the simple card of comp art comp compromise. Changing a country spanning one continent and 200 million souls is not come easy, and the founders had the foresight to predict the growing pains the country will face, pains we are suffering now. Change in the Bill of Rights sense came from the form of increments shaped by painstaking compromises from America's greatest statesmen, With such, without such demonstrations of due action or caution. It is safe to conclude that we have not enjoyed the freedoms of the Constitution now proclaims, nor, for that matter, whole and indivisible nation to call for our own. And agreement reached, so I apologize for saving so much. It's just I don't want to come back and do this. So, one step closer to comprehensive treaty. Nice. They invested in negative 50. We've invested 50. Looking pretty good so far. As we discuss the third old clause. Like Santa Claus. Cheap. Wow. Oh, we got it back. The end of an era. If you want to go that, please go right ahead. Nice. Look at that. Well. First try, we got the ports of LA back. That's pretty nice. Not gonna lie, pretty darn nice. Build them up as well, and then you're gonna do this, and we can make put a few more CVs here too. I do apologize for saving so much though, but it, that's pretty successful. Ah, it doesn't take that long to save though. There you go. We keep going, keep going. See what else we can do. Negative 31 billion. Oh, that's so nice. One more proposition. If you want to about that, please go ahead. Submit the proposal. Round two. Here we go. We're currently in the lead. Oh, you bet we are. Um, people still really like us generally. We don't need anything there. Can we? Yes. The center needs to die. Nice. Pushing commence. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, round two. Well, the present turned back. Cool. 
Now, days after the rigorous uh, riotous celebrations in L.A. and San Francisco, the foreign minister returned to D.C. under President Bennett's personal invitation. The visit's official intent was a tour around the American capital, a show of goodwill capitalizing on the momentum of the now-named Hanover success. Unofficially, while well, the old man had his suspicions, he thought them confirmed when he entered the Oval Office and saw President Bennett, back turned inspecting a large canvas map of Hawaii. The minister drew in a sharp breath as he took a seat, sealing himself for the last conversation he ever wished to confront in his career. I trust accommodations are to your liking, President Bennett asked without notes, glancing back. The foreign minister grunted in assent. Not exactly proper to decorum, but he figured the silence meant that the president didn't care. Good. Now the shoes clacked with polished linoleum. Linoleum. As the president shuffled back to the resolute desk, pulling several folders out of his cabinet, he spread the stack across the surface like a dealer with a stack of cards. Each folder bore a proposal and read capital letters across the tab. I wouldn't want to bother or keep you from seeing the sights, so we'll keep this brief. We've got some ideas for your government's consideration, and we'll discuss these more later during your stay. As quickly as he had arrived, the minister left the office, escorted by his assigned guards. When he eventually inspected the president's ideas in a print form, he was drawn to measure negotiations, exchange the Panama Canal Zone, no. Unconditional retrocession, yes. Unconditional retrocession. We invested a hundred PP. We are going big or go home. Concerning reports. Oh, if you know about that, please go ahead. Submerged exile, huh? Well, we'll see. Regarding DMZ violations, you know what? Like normal. If you want to read about that, because there's nothing unique about that with Bennett. So if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Disciplinary measures. Yeah, disciplinary measures. Yeah, that'd be good. The Eagle withdraws new no. regarding the violations. Yeah, we want to agree to that one. They invested 50. Got some return to the Hawaii, to back to the U.S. Please, baby, come on. Dots on the screen. Oh, boy. Get me through to Washington. There's an entire Japanese fleet on the way. Oh, boy. Oh, some withdraws. Oh, that sucks. So we didn't get them. So we got the political power, but we didn't get them. So um, if you want to about that, please go ahead. So now it's over. So let me go back and see if we can actually get them. Well, everybody, we've done it. After like four or five different attempts, we have a handshake. So, But if you like to about the handshake, please go right ahead. Uh, Mr. Minister, we regret to... Very nice. Well, I knew it would take some time, but we got it done eventually, which is pretty darn nice. And it should pass. If you want about that, please go ahead. Hunter's Quarry. Peace in her time. Nice, look at that. More political power, daring to dream of the new dawn. Yes, please. Awesome, awesome. And Hunter's Quarry, if you want about that, please go ahead. Heaven forbid they call it a bluff. And would you look at that? We got... Ooh. Oh, crap. Hold on. Oh, that's not good. Uh, let's see. Give me one second here. And should still be going on. Cool. All right. Pretty good. Political realities. Because we can. Um, Woodstock. If you want to about Woodstock, please go right ahead. The Japanese treaty signed that wins a change in the Pacific. Awesome. 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 Yeah. All right. Pretty darn nice. Uh, after that one, uh, National Security Works looks a little better. The RDs do. Merely a part of the whole. Who grows more unified? It's not a bad idea. Why not? Though President Bennett wholeheartedly believes in the U.S. supremacy in the free world, he does not believe it should exploit its advantageous position to extract yet more concessions out of its support appears. Rather, he thinks that the OFN would be rather better served practicing the democracy it celebrates. Among the policies intended to bring such opinion into being included, providing all member states with an equal say in deciding upon the organization's decisions and mandates in the setup, America would ideally only be the first among equally sized cogs comprising the great machines of freedom and prosperity. A loose coalition of Democrats and national progressives has spoken out against President Bennett's decision, saying the willful weakening of America's influence within the OFM. On the opposite side, delegates throughout the OFM have welcomed Bennett's newest reform for strengthening the OFM's long term viability. Um, if you want to about Yakin Lab, please go ahead. Smile for the camera. A historic handshake. Very cool. Because what is going on over in Europe, right? Or, I guess, Europe, Asia, Russia. Territory. Um, we have... Pretty much everyone's still divided. Oh, the Omskin. These guys are killing each other off. Ooh. Got that down, too. Thank you very much. Zukov versus Yazov. And then we have... Like... Likachev versus... Oh, Salvin. Hello, Salvin. Look at a lot of political power. Um, everyone still pretty much likes us. Hopefully... And you know what? At 69, we gotta get the, these civvies and industry stuff done, and then we'll cut down spending eventually because we're gonna probably have an oil crisis soon. Just saying. Not saying I know that for sure. And we still need some political power. Get some more research speed would be very bueno. Let's do some more industry, industry stuff, shall we? Of course we shall. Signal companies would be nice as well. Yeah, Spain is. Spain is pain. I wish we could send volunteers, but, uh. Not quite allowed to, so. Joseph? Joseph? Uh, and Sean is here too, so. Yeah, yeah, that sucks for them. Oh well. Sucks to be them. And that's why we're not them. Cool, so that's why not. Happy October 1st, everybody. Hope a happy, happy, happy October 1st. 
And we're still building up the ports. More infrastructure, more forts, more factories. Less than 52 billion is pretty nice. Could be better, though. And once the debt's gone, well, then we're just going to boost, 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 boost some other stuff up. Oh, here's a relationship. Ah, that's good. Um, yeah, merely part of the whole. Nice. Anything else here? Oh, actually, let's come up here. CIA stuff. Egypt's falling apart. That's fine. Whatever. Suppress these guys, too. Arabia's very good. The 69 World Series. If we want to read about that, please go right ahead. Very high, very high, very high. Catholic opinion. Uh, there you go. Very nice, very nice. And, yeah, just Catholic opinion. That's not super good right now, but that's fine. Whatever. They'll come around eventually. I promise. They will. So, national security works? Probably. Keeping uh, uh, on upsetting our systems and sentiments, agents from Germania and Tokyo doubtlessly attempt to reach out to us with false civility and malicious intentions. Perfidity and subterfuge are their weapons of choice against democracy. This must be met with vigilance and awareness both from the American government and the, and the American people. The federal government shall spearhead such efforts by implementing heightened surveillance measures nationwide. Domestic security apparatuses will see their budgets increased, and their priorities reshuffled towards surveillance in the coming months. Civil rights activists raise concerns over the ordinance's supposed authoritarian bent, but President Bennett assures the public that any infringements upon American political and civil liberties done during the implementation will be punished accordingly. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, which means good luck, America. You're going to need some luck, because we're going to be spying the crap out of you right now. So cut that down, and so we can build ourselves a little more. So much green. Everyone read about the death of Joseph Kennedy, please go right ahead. What a fella. Good or bad, doesn't matter, he's dead. And his legacy, well, it speaks for himself. Every time a politician dies, you feel so bad. But not really, no, because you know another rat and snake has died. But anyways, not enough about my political opinions. His dynasty lives on. Cool. And build ourselves up, including the ports, which are very, very nice. We want to build up Hawaii and Alaska as well. Don't want to forget about them states. Keep going on. That's nothing there. Uh, oh, yes, please. Anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, so part of the Japanese fear of influence and stuff. Nothing down here which kind of sucks, but that's alright. 46 billion in debts? Not bad. Terrorist attack in Italy? That ain't good. Oh. Piazza Fonta thingamabob? Oh, that's not bueno. Down here, uh, sink the pro American cinema. You never know if you need more pee pee. Just nice, 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 nice. And separate church and state. Uh, foreign businesses love us. Mormons generally like us, but we can appeal to them too, because why not? And then peg to the dollar. We're doing some pegging here, huh? Prevent currency devaluation, death of the tariff. Well, I'll do that one next. It's been a short while since trade barriers have been unanimously relaxed throughout the OFM, and we're happy to say that trade has never been better. American goods have entered the world market at greater volumes than the year prior. Likewise, more products from Australia, Canada, and other member states have entered our markets. With a surge of goods, uh, followed consumer-friendly prices, and upswing, upswing of new jobs on both sides of the ocean flanking our shores. At seeing the new trade policies working above and beyond expectations, the President's policymakers have suggested completely excising tariffs to, ne to be negligible, or near, near zero percentages. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Keep boop, 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 boop. Very nice. Ah, less than four, almost less than 40 billion. Not bad. Um, very high, very high. American businesses. There you go. Separation church and state. Might as well. Work with open businesses. Nah, we good. Nice. Anything else here that we really care about? Nope. Intelligence, Germany stuff. Don't care about all that other stuff. Thank you very much. And peg to the dollar. Isolationism and never again. Prevent currency devaluation. Let's wait to get a bigger GDP. Peg to the dollar. The fixed exchange rates have made positive strides since implementation, yet such strides remain too short to provide meaningful impact for the economic woes of another of other OFM member states. Guyana and the West Indies maintain below average economic growth while Australian and Canadian dollars continue to grow without value, growing in value. As it has become increasingly common, they now look to the White House for solutions. And my apologies, I'm going to go and do this real quick. Now that we want, I'm not really concerned about this too much, so... <clears throat> the president's advisors have suggested pegging all OFM currencies to the American dollar. This allows them growth matching our own economies and their respective nation some surety over how much their money own money is worth. It's a risky proposal and one which no doubt treads all sorts of sovereignty issues, but much like the rising tide lifts all boats, so too shall the work, world's greatest economy shoulder the burden of lifting the free world to a starry-eyed future. Nice. 
Ah, uh, do we miss anything else over here? Six, zero, six. Uh, count three, count three, beer. All right, yeah, one out of one, uh, zero, zero, three, one, one, three. No, four out of two, huh? That's kind of weird, but all right, we'll take it. That's some 40 billion, baby. Happy 1970, buddy. It's going to be a great year. Nothing bad will ever happen to us here. Never, 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 never. Death of the tariff, and then cool. So what can we campaign that would be make sense? There's a lot of safe RD stuff. Saudi victory in Yemen? Very nice. Maybe the Deep South. That might be really good. Safe, likely, yeah. They're leaning towards RDs. Maybe Great Lakes, Death of the Tariff. Mediocre campaign, Vancouver AP. After months of negotiations, spanning multiple continents, a general agreement on tariffs and trade was signed by representatives of more than 20 countries. The so-called Vancouver Round, which was intended to finalize a number of concessions, led to the repeal of uh, numerous tariffs and trade regulations by countries in the Organization of Free Nations, as well as a number of neutral states. Secretary of State Edmund Muskie, who was president of the signing, hailed this GATT. As the ceremony stated, this agreement does not just encourage trade among free peoples, it also encourages liberty around the world. From American factories to Australian ports, from the Canadian mines to Argentine farmers, the world can finally find prosperity through peace and fair exchange by repealing tariffs. That idea of fairness will become the norm. Let me have no line. It becomes none but tradesmen. Nice. Ooh, more growth. Nice. Isolationism, never again. It's an open secret that the U.S. is an OFN's linchpin. Without the superpower, there will be no grand bloc of democratic countries proposed opposed ramp of German and Japanese imperialism. Continuing the pipe of freedom and liberty abroad will thus demand our money, manpower, and material until they have spread to every corner of the globe. President Bennett, of course, welcomes the oath-sworn duty of the free world's mightiest power. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. I don't really feel like reading this, so... That's fine. We can help him out. However, he has reiterated that he will not entangle the armed forces in a counterproductive foreign adventure simply because he can. In the stage of the war against fascism, the president believes co covert operations and development aid will result in more fruitful improvements to the countries we intend to help than disastrous conflicts. Some might say no no more Vietnam, but then again, what's a Vietnam? Um, Great Lakes, maybe? Maybe we'll do the Deep South next. Because right now, this is what we're looking at. Wow, look at that. Everyone loves Bennett. Democrat, but he's been very kind of liberal. Yeah, solid south, except for Texas in this area around here. Back to the dollar, polls are updated. Well, good luck. Good job. Hope we don't lose too much support. At least not too much. Yeah, we like pegging here. Oh, are we done building? Okay, so if that's the case, if we're done really building, I'll probably miss some place here, like DC, maybe not now. Um, usually, oh, and because of that, cut it down. Nice. Jet fighter, we're really building up. Uh, a really strong mid and normal is just west there you go why are we investing in so many factories because what else are we going to invest in that stuff is all done let's grab some of that peg to the dollar very nice come over here get some of this stuff too get some more soft attack and get some of this too. more land out of tech is real good group jet fighter do come over here do this take 15 factors away thank you very much nice yeah, do that too, because can. Minus 41 billion, super nice. Good RD campaign, very good here. Um, if that's the case, let's go ahead and do... Let's do Deep South next. I will read the next focus after that one, too. Hmm. Happy May, everybody. Happy, happy May. Hmm. When can we vote for the next one? Should happen any day now. There we go. Deep South. Prevent currency devaluation. Under a slate of substandard conditions, the dollar's value is inclined to oscillate rapidly between increasing and decreasing to near worthlessness. To the American economy, the former is a familiar threat as far back as the age of British colonialism. Successive years have been seen. A uniform increase in the value without being matched by an increase in consumer purchasing power. Left unchecked, this burgeoning crisis will spiral out of control and into the world of worse recession. President Ben, after consulting the matter with his cabinet, has ordered the Federal Reserve to reduce the flow of money into the economy for the remainder of his term. Nice. $48 billion. Uh, we still need that political power, but we're doing pretty darn well. Cut that, at least for now. I don't want to cut this yet, so just keep spending. And we can cut this one to 7.9. Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Moment Moneybags do be doing a lot of work here, man. Suppress the far right, especially during election year. Sign us up. Isolationism never again, my friends. Defend Liberty Abroad. One minute. The red light on the camera flicked on. Roger wasn't in favor of this program and figured it was a waste of time and unlikely to attract viewers, but the White House had learned and leaned discreetly, of course, on one of CBS's DC correspondents. They wanted to get more airtime for their anti-tariff efforts while offering some better access elsewhere to favor another broadcaster. They even had provided some Deputy Secretary of Commerce to advocate for the position. 
<clears throat> so there he was at 7 in the evening on a Friday night, moderating a discussion. 30 seconds. Opposite the direct deputy secretary was a straight lace blue tie blue tie clad representative from the UAW's policy shop. Even though they were both in suits, they represented very different outlooks. It was a call for reason, common sense, and international trade versus the voice of the disaffected working man. Five. Four. Good evening. This is CBS News. I'm Roger Mudd. Military Neesism. Or Keesism. I always say his name wrong. No matter what campaign it is, I always say their name wrong. Because the country's economic output is decided largely by total demand of its goods in domestic and international markets, high consumer spending is necessary in order to maintain a strong and healthy economy. Demand must be kept up across all sectors with government intervention if necessary services. Agriculture, electronics, and national defense. Contractors such as Lockheed Martin and Boeing make much of the revenue from weapons and sales of the federal government. For the president, a modest increase in how much we're allowed to spend on the goods and services will contribute to improving not only America's military prowess, but also its economic sinews. New expensing, costing 2% of our current GDP. Oh, that sucks. Our profession does go up, which is, you know, a compromise. Uh, let's go deep south again, because we can. Marines. Choppers. Poles are updated. Nice. Let's check in on the horse race. And what else we got around here? Better already. Nice. Almost 20 billion or less. 7.9% is not good enough. Deep South is uh, kind of a toss-up. So, oh crap! No, no! Come on, come on! Please don't! Please, please! Let's get at least this one done first. Okay, that's fine. Crap! Oil crisis has hit. Um, we don't want to do either one of these yet. So let's get the political power first. Don't rock the boat. Um, Catholic opinion is high, very high, dude. Party unity doesn't matter. Machine fault. Do we run about that? Please go ahead. God dang it. Military outlook. Can't do any of that stuff down there yet. God dang it. Running on fumes if you're running about that, please. Good head. Uh, I hate the oil crisis so much. How much are we in debt now? I refuse to be in debt. We have no more cities, apparently. Wow. Wow. That really sucks. But, I mean, we can't even build anything, so. As long as we're getting rid of that debt, that's my goal. That's absolutely 100% my goal right now. Um, excellent RD campaign, good. If you're wondering about set the prices, please go right ahead. As well as Federal Energy Office, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everything's bigger in Texas, too. Enforced rationing, too. As well as Synthetic Alternative. And probably Disaster Averted. Honestly, I don't think there's going to be a lot here in terms of content for these guys. Oh, we have an election, of course, but I could be wrong. Let's do that one first. And campaign where? The Deep South, Upper South, Earth Bleeds. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. The Wheels of Ages turns once more. Crap. That suckerinos, man. That really sucks. But hey, at least we cut down the debts, maybe some more. Yeah, 1.4. Okay, so 7.9. I went down to 7.8. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Look at all that 100 million. Basically, does nothing for us. But at least it lets us cut it down still. God, I hate the oil crisis so much. Wait. Zukov. Are you losing to Omsk? You're out of man. Oh, you're both out of manpower. So the price is 0.86 ain't too bad still, but man. Uh, I want it. Oh, it's September 11th already. That sucks. Nice. Might as well do that too, because he can. Why not? Even East Coast is looking pretty good. MPP, Democratic Party incumbent. Upper South, MPP, lean to MPP. Yeah. I do want to see how we end up doing here, though. Mediocre campaign. Of course, we would have a mediocre campaign. High, high. Normans. Catholic opinion is very high. Eh, I'm about to do that. Cool. There you go. Hey, one, minus one billion is not bad, though. Could be better, though. Could be a lot, lot better. Increase party unity. Cut. Nice. Cut this deal. There you go. Oh my gosh. If we cut civilian spending, it's good. But now we probably get like 0.5 or 0.6 political power. Yeah, 0.6. Capitals, commodities, if you want to about that, please go right ahead. Nice. So now it's 0.78. Actually, that's not too bad. Yeah, we're still going to cut down the debt no matter what happens. We can balloon it up a little later, but whatever. Uh, deep, deep South, maybe? I don't know. Deep South. Yeah. Toss up. Yeah, 18 billion is not bad. Especially during an economic crisis like this. Oh boy. 
Yeah, we don't get that much political power, so. Oh boy, I don't like I don't like this part. Poverty was not gonna get any better, armed professionalism is barely going up. Industrial expertise is not doing too bad. Uh, agriculture ain't too bad. Academic base is going up too. Balls are updated, huh? Chicken on the horse race. Oh, that one. Synthetic alternative. It's fine. Someday, whenever toolbox here comes out, we'll have a lot more stuff to do here, but until that day, we don't have that option. So, it really does suck. I just want to get back to normal. I just want to do Bennett things. Just want to do Bennett things, man. So, you play as uh, Yunnan here. I think Baratti's probably going to lose. So, the Commies are probably going to lose in Russia. No guarantee, but they're probably going to lose. Out of manpower. Uh, you got a manpower, too. Yeah, you have 22 divisions. Yeah, not, you're not going to make it. 21 versus 28. That's not very much either for either side. All right, not bad. All right, let's see. Everyone be quiet. All right, so what happened? All right, so Republican defended their seat against Republican seat. Republican lost to the Democratic Party. Okay, so we lost 20 Republicans. Holy crap. That's a pretty big upset. We got one more far right. We got one more Democrat. I mean, technically, we are Democrats here. Like, for this campaign, we are Democrats. And obviously, we got Hawaii back. We got the ports back. So the Republican Party really sucked, which is not bad for us, actually. But really, it was an exchange. So basically, the Solid South is still the Solid South. We have 50 Democrats. 50. No one in the center cares about the center. 50 Democrats, 23 far-right MPPs, and 27 Republicans. Yet we still were able to get, like, moderate civil rights. Or powerful civil rights. This is such a weird timeline. Democrats are 50. literally make up half the Senate. That's insane. And the Republicans are now now the, the minority party, which is weird. Because earlier we read the Democrats were the minority party. But no, not, not this time. Not this time. No, no, no. Democrats are here and in charge. While the Republicans are now the... Well, technically the second biggest party as well. So, they're not small. And the far right is doing well, but... Cool. Polls are updated. Great job, guys. Great job, Arenos. Hopefully we'll get rid of this oil crass and we do okay. And we have a new Don, too. I mean, it's not great, but... The defeat is just a dying memory, huh? Overall, that could have been a lot worse. Look at the Italian Peninsula. If you're worried about that, please go ahead. Italy and her oil will be safe. Back to normal-ish. Nice. Uh, don't care about Italy. I want to finish Bennett's tree first and see what happens. We can do Italian stuff, but that happens every campaign. So, military Nesianism? Yes, please. Gonna hurt us. Oh boy, don't hurt us too badly. Anything change here yet? Nope. All right, and we're back to normal, the fiscal or financial monetary conference. It seems as if not a day passes without news of yet another financial crisis rocking the country. Report on the news are on the airwaves. The anarchy investing what little counts as a world system in this day and age offers no help in this regard, and rather, it may to exacerbate the effects for what buoys confidence the least than an utter lack of stability to look forward to. There's little else we can do for the most of the world but to assume that the German, Italian, or Japanese overlords have their own solutions. For the OFN, however, well, it's, it's why the president has announced a conference to be held at the quaint hotel complex in beautiful New Hampshire. World-spanning economic solutions deserve more than legislation hand, handed piecemeal after all. Nice. Very, very nice. Happy 71, everybody. Hope you're having a tremendous year. Nice. Oh, less than 10 billion. That's so good. Oops. I'm still getting one a day. It's not bad. And I'll cut this down, too. Still one a day. That is so nice. You building more cities here? Nope. And if we can't, that's all we care about right now. Minus 30 billion in deficit. Oh. Almost 5 billion in debt. Oh, Mr. Mormon money bags. Even though it's going to hurt new expenses. Oh, I hate new expenses, man. 30 billion. As long as it's still like 20 billion, I think we'll be okay, but we'll see. Found the IMF and World Bank. Oh, look at that. The conference has thus far gone smoother than most of our optimistic expectations. The OFN's policymakers agree unanimously on a united effort against the multitude of this decade's prevailing economic issues. One such issue is the lack of reserve money to draw from in times of emergency. Not everyone has the wherewithal or the luxury to set aside funds for when the yearly budget inevitably comes short, or when the acts of God cause untold millions of dollars in damages. Without a reliable lender to guarantee them safe loans for to restore or accelerate economic growth, these nations' capabilities to recover from tumultuous circumstances will remain weak and sufficient. When they enter the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, two multinational institutions backed by American economic might, willing and enabled to offer these very loans to all OFN member states. Our economists are confident that these are the silver bullets the free world needs to outlast the crises of the future. Greatly little relationship with American businesses, which sucks, but gets more consumer goods, which is nice, but still. Um, 
Just in case we'll do that one for now. It's fine. We got enough political power anyways. I'm not too concerned about that. We can do that. Strengthen American pro business American sentiment. Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. There was a comment from one of the previous videos saying that we should. Oh, that's yeah, roughly 20 billion. Oh, 8%. We're going to buy point two. Not bad. But we should do like all the different paths for Bennett. Like, we went with the Republican path, basically. Token reforms. We should do rock the boat. Uh, a fine line. Empower the Democrats. But eventually. Not yet, but someday. Someday. Far and away in another world. A voyage to Vancouver. After months of deliberation and discussion regarding economic diplomacy and financial connections to other members of the OFM, President Bennett now watches the waves of the English Bay in Vancouver, preparing to face the diplomats awaiting his introduction. Anxieties over the Canadian government's lack of enthusiasm and the OFM have finally been sated with the honor of holding the conference, and now Bennett's dream of the OFM's economic ascendancy will finally unfold. President Bennett escaped the cold Canadian winds as he stepped inside as attendants of uh, the event all rose and applauded the President upon entry. Good no morning, my fellow representatives. It is with great honor to announce the beginning of the first financial and monetary conference for the OFM. Please, everyone take a seat. The diplomats lower themselves into their seats as the president continued his address. Opposite the Atlantic, the Third Reich continues to terrorize the peoples of Europe, dominating them both politically and economically, with few rivals. Across the Pacific, the Japanese Empire exploits their Asian subjects, the so-called triumph of coercion against the foundations of free trade. As the last true proponents of free peoples and markets, it's our duty to stand united against those who seek to undo the freedoms of our people and to combat fascist governments, encroachment on the world economy. The financial monetary conference shall safeguard proper economic ties with the proud members of the OFM for a freedom and prosperous world. To liberty, justice, and prosperity, and thus Bretton Woods system, which I heard about before. I'm not really sure what that is, but it was a system that we used to be on, I think. Throughout the Bretton Woods Conference, the multitude of President Bennett's OFM friendly legislation, the exchange rates, dollar pegs, the debt forgiveness plans, the World Bank, and the IMF have been revised, collated, and standardized into one strong system of regimes. In doing so, the OFM's nations have bound themselves closer to the powerful engines of its greatest champion, themselves made stronger by cylinders and pistons. This, however, is a new colossus was incomplete, but for the momentous decision to allow full convertibility between the American dollar and gold, in doing so, the United States has forever tied success to a prize, yet scarce metal. A small sacrifice to pay for passion in the world's last democracies into the bastions of economic stability. The organization of free nations has converged upon Bretton Woods, and in doing so, leaves it mightier than ever before. Let tyrants shake their rods and chains as they please, for they shall find the free world united. Apologies for speaking really fast, just like, this is a lot of interesting things that we're doing here. And I want us to do well. When in doubt, you know me, I want us to do very well. The Mormons don't like us anymore, but, you know, whatever. Catholics don't like us, but whatever. The religious don't like us, but whatever. It is what it is. They'll never like us that much. Hey, half, less than a billion. Oh, hello. The Iranian Civil War, if you wonder about that, please go right ahead. Excuse me, I'd like to finish the IMF World Bank stuff first. I don't give a crap about Iran right now. Let's press the far right. America right now is more important than Iranian affairs. Foreign capital. Uh, subsidizing the companies that will have some effect countering economic collapse. But for more lasting support, we should look into foreign capital. New neutral nations in Europe, like Sweden and Switzerland, are begging to invest in our companies, so it's time to give them the go-ahead. Let the foreign money flow and get our economy back on track. Welcome, financial ambassadors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for spending your money here. Are you kidding me? Did we get that one? No. Nope. I'm doing that one first. Nope. You're not going to screw that. Screw us out of that one. I will use cost commands if we have to. Screw that. But if you want to read about the Iranian Civil War, please go right ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but that's stupid. Why does it cancel? That's a bug in the game still. Oh, no, maybe not a bug, but it's a paradox bug. It's not a TNO bug. It's definitely a paradox bug. That's happened to me before. And I've hated it every single time. Raise it, raise it, raise it. Good, good, good. Keep cutting for now. It's fine. It's fine. And you're on an eight bill. If you want to build up, please go ahead. Boom. Don't rock that there boat. Might as well. There you go. Nice, and now, my friends, we are out of debt. First time, or maybe maybe the second time, actually, in American history, that we are now not beholden to anyone with debt. Leonard? Okay, Leonard, you're going to head on over to Iran. Want to spend some good old time in uh, Iran, because everyone loves Iran. 160. Where are the planes? Um... Come on home, guys. Come on home. 
So, deck of bombers. Ooh, chaos. Yes. There you go. Nice. Intensify volunteers we could, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to build up his good head. Yay, more political power. Follow it up with American Aid Inbound. Which we're going to read, The Torch Burns Bright. In his wisdom, President Jefferson once said that the Tree of Liberty must be watered every so often with the blood of patriots. President Bennett was not one for violence, but he does believe that the torch of human freedom must likewise be fed with kindling and tender. The intensity of the flames proportions itself accordingly to the quality of its tender fuel. Stronger commitments to like-minded causes create brighter, more beautiful flames. Eight years of hindsight has led the president to appreciate how far it has grown. Once sputtered a licks of ember after Watergate. Now a blazing inferno after the many reforms of his two terms. At home, the American people now exercise their freedoms under a safe and stable system managed by capable men. Abroad, America's own League of Nations, free nations, grow by leaps and bounds, bringing life and vigor to the ideals besieged by fascist empires. My friends, it's time to bring freedom and prosperity to Tehran. Doing the best we possibly absolutely can cool 100 million in debt what the bad word is that I don't believe in that D word debt is a boogeyman I swear to God American aid inbound uh, and we'll do George burns bright the burns real bright all right we won good job guys we won <laughs> uh, is that it well we won you're still allied all we had to do is show up, and we won. I like it when that happened. It's still middling. That's not bad. A uh, Catholic opinion? Mm, church opinion? Nice. Just showed up and won. God, I wish I could say that in real life, but whatever. George Burns Bryant, and then Lady Liberty fights on. This state of affairs cannot last, of course. Systems uh, uh, won't are wont to be upended by their own weight and time, and a large enough crisis can knock one over to make room for another. Better suited to tackle the present and its issues than the past. But the weary Utah allowed himself some satisfaction for making the most out of his presidency, and thus in bringing about the feats his country can achieve at its greatest might. President Wallace F. Bennett laid out on Chuckle as he leaned back against the most prestigious office in Washington, D.C. His feet laid atop the resolute desk, and the legs now free to shuffle about a desk void of drafts and memos for the first time in eight years. America can find his clauses or causes without him, but with him, he can deservedly say he has gained. It has gained the disposition and the means to fight for on many more decades to come. Not bad for a Mormon office clerk, all things considered. You remove a new dawn. Oh, we actually remove the new dawn. Oh, wow. Isn't that like a party in Greece? A new dawn? Something Don? It's not like Don Soap. But. And now, you are all killing each other. Good job, guys. Great job. Well, we're going back. That was fast. Democracy calls. I guess. Oh, some, some of those guys want to. Four, are you kidding me? 40? Are you flipping kidding me, man? There you go. You try to make him win. Oh, the Rose Garden, 1.32 p.m. A Rose Garden luncheon, charming in every sort of way. And every table, uh, under the usually bright sun, dozens of guests were smiling, and President Bennett has organized a celebratory lunch to praise key members of his administration, along with some special guests from high society. People of honor and foreign governments, the mood is high as President Bennett prepares to take his to the podium and make a speech. My fellow Americans, honored guests, and members of my administration, today we stand as one America. One organization, free nations, one world. Over the past few years, we have achieved the greatest accomplishments. Soar to the highest heights and have sealed, healed the wounds left from the pa decades past. The economy is booming, our people enjoy rights like no other. Democracies all across the globe know that our way of life is no longer at stake. The Nazi scourge in Germany and the imperialist menace in Japan are beginning to know their place. While their empires of dirt and toil collapse and our nation grows and prospers, we stand united the torch of freedom burns bright. Rapid applause erupts from the Rose Garden. The jubilant crowd, fired up from words of passion and wisdom, has opened their eyes. The future to them does not look bleak so anymore. Thirty years from now, when the generations ask what they did during the Great Cold War, everyone in attendance can simply and confidently say that they won. Business is a booming. That's more than enough for me. And we remove... we got oil concessions. Unbreakable open union. Nice. Powerful civil rights. The last bastion of liberty. Um, advisor 2. Members of the International Monetary Fund. Imposed rationing. This one will remove a new dawn. Where's the new dawn? Control markets. Oh, we removed that. Okay, nice. That's awesome, actually. Can I just, like, set and forget? Honestly, come down here. I'm gonna kill these guys off first. 
You should not exist. You Iranians should not exist. Uh, don't take that out of context, please. Unless you really want to, I don't really care. Go in. Nice. Herman. There you go. Keep going in, guys. You're doing a great job. Keep going, keep going. You'll be fine. There you go. Up to 40 only still, huh? Alright, well, whatever. Uh, if you want, go right here. Cut these guys off. Makes it easier for everybody if you actually do that. There you go. Alright, not bad. Yeah, but seriously, we just show up and we win. I love it. Scout helis. If you're a little more political power that we don't really need. Nice. Six hundred and sixty-four billion is not really that much, but you know, whatever. Go in if you can, I'm not worried about that. You know what? Um uh, cut this and spend more here. Alright, we showed up and we won. Oh, actually. You know, because this is a little bit glitch still, so let's do this. Thank you. There you go. Now that should make a united Iran. So that's it. Um, if you want to about that, please go right ahead, I guess. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Operation success, great. That should be the end of the campaign for us, technically, so. Um, there's nothing else for Bennett, I suppose. I could just let it run and see what happens. Um, but yeah. We did well. Is that it? I mean, there's stuff up here. There's stuff over here, too, but this is sort of generic stuff. It doesn't really matter. We're ready to face any challenge now. Expand West Point. We won in Iran. I think this has got to be it, right? Liberals winning in Iran. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. We can only hope to say it that way. Um, alright then. That's got to be it, right? Russian Reclamation Government. Oh, look at that. If you want to read El Duce's disaster, please go ahead. Oil must flow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. We didn't get an end screen here, but, which is weird. Sometimes you don't get one. But I'm like 100% sure that that should be it. I think we've done really, really well. There's nothing else here, I'm pretty sure. So, I think that's where we're going to end the campaign. We've done really well in Iran. We've done really... Actually, are they in the open? Yeah, oh, they are in the open. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. And we have Italy as well. Oh, I mean, my goodness. United Arab States. We could probably go in there and kill them all off. But, I think that's pretty much it for Bennett. So, hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, do leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.